Some call them ghosts, others call them spirits. Potato, potato. Regardless of their label, some of these encounters have proven to be reassuring and positive. Those are not the ones we're talking about today. Nope, we're talking about the bone chilling, spine tingling, goosebump producing tales. Stay tuned to number one to find out about a Civil War soldier who haunts an old brothel in New Orleans. Number 10, Mount Misery and Sweet Hollow Road. Sometimes there is an experience one person goes through. This, however, is about a place where multiple people have had honest-to-goodness scares. Long Island, New York has two roads, essentially parallel to one another, with dreary stories dating back to the Native Americans thinking this land was cursed. The alleged tales vary from a ghostly woman in white wandering the road to the spirits of children attached to an overpass from their torturous demise in a fire while at camp. Despite the true backgrounds being hazy, the hauntings in these areas are not. One such experience involves some fear-seeking family members hoping to encounter said children's spirits. While there, nothing seemed to have happened, so going home disappointed, they went off to bed. That night, however, they got their wish. The mom slept uneasy the entire night, feeling as if something was watching her. Even scarier is the fact that the other three people all had the exact same dream that night. It was of a small, pale boy with black hair and a face no one could remember. Apparently, these kitty spirits like to spook people after the fact. Another group of friends went off one night hoping to hear the giggles of spirit children. They eventually gave up and went for a late night coffee run. While returning to their car after getting coffee, they noticed from the parking lot light shining onto their car that there were small child-sized handprints all over their windows. But that's not all folks. When they tried to wipe them off, they couldn't because the handprints were on the inside of the car. There are many stories about these roads and paranormal investigators have even gone to check them out. Some of their photographs showed up with strange orbs of light that appeared right after they asked if a spirit was there. Their EVP readings contain clips of sounds with voices asking for help. Other investigators have recorded clips with a growling sound, followed by a voice asking for help. Needless to say, if you're ever driving around Long Island, you might want to avoid these roads, unless you're in the mood for a fright. Number 9. Amityville Horror House some stories are so eerily real that movies are made about them. Most people probably know about the Amityville Horror House. You know, that horror movie where the guy was driven insane by evil spirits and voices in his house and ended up murdering his whole family? Except it actually happened. Not only that, but the house seems to bring with it a curse. The brave souls who lived there after the murders are said to have experienced an angry man's voice shouting at them to get out. Family members levitating in their sleep and seeing slime ooze out of keyholes. They even passed a lie detector test to prove it. Since those horrific events, the house has been revamped and cleansed and hopefully has a less evilly feel if you're inside. But that doesn't mean it's not still cursed. A family that later lived there didn't publicly report any instances, but their son was killed in the 9-11 attacks in New York City. Though that could be completely unrelated, it does make you wonder if a curse still remains on those that lived there. Number 8. Poltergeist Sometimes there's a movie so scary that your only comfort later that night when you're trying to fall asleep in the dark, quiet room is that it was just a movie. Except, what if it wasn't just a movie? Welcome to the world of Poltergeist. The family that really lived through that horror experienced things popping open, items flying through the air and a heavy bookcase suddenly falling over. Police and priests also experienced the unexplained when investigations and attempted cleansings were done. Not only was the story real, but those that later worked on the movie seemed to inherit the curse. The number of cast members' deaths between the end of filming the first Poltergeist to Poltergeist 3 being released is chilling. The actress who played the older sister? Murdered. The actor who played the priest, cancer before Poltergeist 2 was released. The shaman, failed transplant. A small part actor, killed with an axe by an escaped convict. Another actor, somehow survived a plane crash. The little sister, a misdiagnosis that led to a fatal heart attack at 12. Yep, 12. 
Number 7. Indianapolis A few years back, the headlines began filling up about a family in Indianapolis where the children were possessed by demons. One might be skeptical of such a story. However, multiple people witnessed this phenomenon on numerous occasions. We're talking about hospital nurses, police officers, holy figures, you name it. It got to the point where there were 800 pages of documentation and police officers started saying that they had no other explanation except the supernatural. But what, you might ask, did this family experience? Oh, uh, you know, the usual. Children walking backwards up the wall and onto the ceiling while grinning weirdly and speaking in deep, unnatural voices. Levitating, swarms of flies, items and people being thrown about the house. Just your everyday ghostly encounter, right? Number 6. Dear David Twitter has been following the seriously creepy episodes of a man living with a spirit of a little boy named David. What started off as a nightmare ended up being more of a premonition. While experiencing sleep paralysis, because, you know, a spooky ghost child a few feet from you with a deformed head isn't creepy enough, so you should be temporarily paralyzed as well. Twitter happy Adam had the pleasure of seeing this boy rocking in a chair only a few feet away, followed by another dream of a girl saying he has met dear David and can only ask him two questions. Since then, Adam has documented the many ongoings in his home, and if you're thinking it's simply a well-woven telefiction, then please note that he has posted photos and videos as well, and they are creepy. Number 5. The Shadow Man This is an interesting one, since many seem to feel that this might not be one man, but instead a form of otherworldly being that sometimes is just a glimpse and sometimes involves paralyzing interactions, literally. There are stories of this man who is like a shaded silhouette from all over the world, some people see him for just a second before he disappears. Others get a solid look at him, watching for more than a minute, though unable to move until he does. But the rarest and scariest incidences get a bit more hands-on. These involve being physically harmed or touched in some way by this looming shadow. People have even written books on Shadow Man, and to add to the legitimacy is the fact that total strangers from all around the world describe the Shadow Man in the same exact way. Number 4. Popper Popper the Poltergeist was actually televised as investigators tried to disprove that there was a ghost. Spoiler alert, the ghost was real. This story starts off with a family suddenly experiencing the caps popping off of bottles. But we're not talking about one or two bottles, no. We're talking about bottles throughout the entire house. Kitchen, basement, bathroom, all popped nail polish, bleach, and even a bottle of holy water. The family themselves were such skeptics that they tried thinking of scientific explanations like a change in humidity or air pressure, or trick wires set up by someone as a joke. Eventually, they called the police to come over one night, only for caps to start popping off and flying directly at the officers. They had priests come, while reporters soon followed and camped outside of the house. A physicist showed up on their doorstep with a dowsing rod, and the family even checked into the Air Force's flight paths. No scientific explanation. The ghost, nicknamed Popper because, well, you can guess why, seemed to be growing bored with simply popping off the caps of things. Objects began falling off tables and lifting into the air for seconds at a time. Then things escalated to things being thrown about, and not just a little toss, picture a figurine being thrown 12 feet across the room. Then an entire bookshelf fell over when no one was in the room. Then a table completely flipped over. This ghost tale, however, has an odd ending. After 67 reported incidences, they just stopped completely. Maybe Popper moved on. Maybe Popper is lying in wait, taking a decades-long nap. Only time will tell if it pops back up. See what I did there? Number 3. The Myrtle's Plantation Nothing like an old southern plantation to set up a ghastly scene. This famous site has tons of tales connected to it, but the most well known is that of Chloe, a slave girl. This story goes that the randy husband of the house used her for his own physical enjoyment while his wife was pregnant. As awful as that was, Chloe knew that the disgusting treatment kept her from working in the fields, which was the worst job to be assigned in her eyes. Then he grew tired of her and she feared the field. So she started eavesdropping to find out what was going to happen to her. 
Chloe was caught, however, and her punishment was to have her ears cut off, leaving her to wear a turban to cover these gnarly scars. But that's not where this story ends. As payback, Chloe poisoned a cake for one of the owner's children's birthdays. Some feel she planned on killing them, while others believe she wanted to be the hero that nursed them back to health. Either way, the kids died, and the other slaves were terrified of being associated with her evil deed. They took it upon themselves to hang her, then toss her weighed down body into a lake. That's where the story ends. Except for the part that Chloe is still hanging around. She can even be seen in a photograph taken by a later owner of the plantation, where a fate image of a woman can be seen with what looks like a turban on her head. Though that's creepy enough to end there, the Myrtle's plantation has many more stories to tell. Another owner was shot and killed on his porch, though managed to climb part way up the stairs before dying. Now some claim to hear his footsteps going up the stairs. The mother of the poisoned children is said to still be there with her children, all trapped in the house. Their handprints will show up on the mirrors. Ghost hunters have traveled to the plantation and guests have paid to brave a night there. From the sudden scent of perfume to the rattling of doorknobs, there's a lot of activity down at the Myrtles. Number 2. Omni Park Hotel Along Boston's Freedom Trail is a hotel. It looks swanky from the outside and is nestled on a path between Boston Commons and Faneuil Hall. Oh, and there's ghosts inside. A bunch of them. One bearded ghost that wanders the 10th floor is believed to be that of Harvey Parker himself, the original owner, walking around with a serious face making sure everything is in order. Then there's the elevator that likes to bring itself to the 3rd floor, with no one on it. One specific room on the 3rd floor has had so many guests complaining that the hotel has turned it into a storage closet. It was in this room that a man committed suicide by mixing whiskey and pills. The strong smell of whiskey and laughter were just a couple of things that people experienced while staying in that room. Oh, and then there's the haunted mirror with the ghost of Charles Dickens. Yep, as in THE Charles Dickens. During his frequent visits, he would practice his speeches in front of that mirror. One particular worker at the hotel refuses to even clean it anymore. When cleaning it, condensation would repeatedly appear as if someone was breathing on it right after he'd swipe his cloth. Was it Dickens saying hi? Or was it Parker checking that everything was spick and span? Well, no one knows because it's apparently never getting cleaned again. Number 1. Dauphine This wouldn't be a complete ghost list without something from good old New Orleans. The Big Easy is bursting with spooky stories, both good and bad. You could cover your eyes and point to a random spot on a map of the city and probably pick a place with a ghost story. But some stories are eerier than others as is the case with the Dauphine Orleans Hotel. Parapsychologists performing paranormal research have even hopped on the bandwagon and checked the place out. And big shocker, they found ghosts. One of the more common spirits that is attached to Dauphine is that of a soldier from possibly the Civil War era. He wanders into the bar area, perhaps hoping to find a lady of the night, since the Dauphine also used to be the hottest brothel in town. The most famous brothel owner at the establishment was Mae Bailey. May's ghost isn't hanging around, but that of her bitter sister Millie is. Detesting where she had to work, she finally became engaged to a Confederate soldier that promised he would take her away from that life. Until he was shot dead on their wedding day. Millie can still be seen wearing her white wedding dress and wandering around looking for her lost love. True romantics like to believe the wandering soldier is that of Millie's true love. Though this particular story is almost sweet, being visited by these spirits can be a nail-biting experience as well. Guests might be sitting at the hotel bar when glasses suddenly drop to the floor and shatter. But the employees seem to get the brunt of it, brochures all tumbling off the shelves at once, doors that were locked suddenly unlocking and swinging open, oh, and bar stools levitating, all in a day's work, right? Tell us about your favorite ghost story in the comments below. Have you had a paranormal encounter that you'd like to share? Don't forget to subscribe and like the video too. Until next time.